what's the good word, y'all? DKB here. So I have an interesting situation going on in the cornerback room in terms of a potential untouchable player um, and a player that could be a surprise cut. And we're talking about Michael Carter II or MC2 and Justin Hardy. So let's start off with MC2. We're talking about a guy that had a pretty significant impact on a very young secondary rooming team, uh, was able to play in 15 games. Looks like he was able to start in about half of those. Um, and basically, the defensive staff loves him for the versatility and all the things he could potentially bring uh, to this defense. We're talking, you know, fumble recoveries. He was sent on blitzes, even being able to pick up a sack. Uh, and ultimately, his defensive coverage, which was a strong part of his game for a good portion of the season uh, before he hit the rookie wall. And, and this is something I think we didn't speak about enough considering how young this New York Jets team was as a whole, uh, offensive, defensively, and special teams. The rookie wall is very real. Uh, if we're talking about training your body to be accustomed to managing playing eight games a season, and then all of a sudden you have to play 17, and that's not even factoring in the playoffs where the intensity ratchets up even more, it's a, it's a huge hurdle for a lot of players. That's nine more games of injuries that can stack up on you um, and etc and so I think uh, for those that love stats when you dive into his first seven games or so versus those last five to six uh, where he played his poorest you definitely see a much different player there now some of the things that stand out to me um, and, and these will be obvious things either from the eyeball test or just taking a look at his stats um, his run support definitely needs to improve quite a bit um, and while he was stout in his past coverage, um, he only allowed one touchdown on the season and there were very few um, huge plays made on him in between. He did allow a 75 percent um, completion percentage. So hopefully we can dwindle that down a bit. But he only allowed 10 yards per catch uh, as a whole on the season, which is excellent. Again, he was able to uh, contribute in the blitzing department. Uh, they were able to uh, send him out there about 26 times. He got a couple pressures and then ultimately a sack. Um, I think ideally with him, because we're talking about a 5'10", 180-ish pound guy, he'll never be the one that forces a bunch of fumbles, but we can improve uh, and see an improvement in the turnover department, as can be said with almost any of the secondary members that we had from last season. Um, and then being a, a little bit more sure in his tackling form uh, and ability because he did have a 10% missed tackle percentage last season. Now, when we compare this to Justin Hardy, completely different kind of individual that we're talking about. Um, Justin Hardy is essentially the motivator, the inspirational, uh, you know, mascot, if you will, for this no gas, no breaks mentality. Um, I loved everything about him in New Orleans, and I loved a lot of the things he said in press conferences and about how he approaches the game. Uh, we've seen him step up to the aid and defense of some of his other members on the team uh, when they were being targeted by members of the media, most notably Makai Becton, uh, when he was advising that, you know, life is a little bit bigger than a game at certain points, and he had a valid reason for not necessarily being active in the off-season activities, um, which I love to see. You you want that camaraderie and that that chemistry where they're willing to you know uh, get down or lay down for the guy next to them. Essentially, um, Justin Hardy, however, uh, you know statistically almost offers nothing for us on the defense, and I think this is intentional. Uh, we're talking about a guy that's played a total of one whopping snap. Uh, on defense all of last season and this is something he's <laughs> he's actually had happen to him in uh, three of his five seasons um, twice in with the Saints and then of course the one time recently with the New York Jets the question is going to be he offers a lot of leadership a lot of inspiration uh, the way he attacks things every day is something that a lot of the other younger players can pull from. And he's just seen a lot, especially with this special teams experience. He brings a much different perspective uh, to that defensive room uh, and whoever else would like to listen to him and kind of pick up some key aspects of the game. He's also a key part of our special teams. Uh, he's an elite 
special team player. The question is, how much do you want to necessarily, um, you know, spend resources on for that area of the game? Now, he's an excellent gunner. There's plenty of other things that he does in the special teams as well. Uh, but we did see a drop off. He was somewhere around like 90, uh, a grade ranking of 90 to 94 with the Saints in his last season. And we dropped down to, I think it was like a 75.8 this season, which is still excellent, but nowhere near uh, that that supreme elite player that he was last season, and there's a lot of uh, you know variables for that. The degree of talent that he had around him, um, the role being a little bit different here than what he would have been asked to do in the Saints. Uh, but nonetheless, can we take the hit and use up a roster spot on a guy that's 99% of the time purely a special team guy? Uh, whereas we've seen so much upgrades throughout the rest of this roster, it might be a disservice to somebody who could step up. And, and there's plenty of names to choose from recently that we talked about. Uh, Kenny Yabo is still one that could be on the rise at some point. We've heard about Lawrence Cager, Jeff Smith, uh, DJ Montgomery. There's still the undrafted free agents like uh, Zonovan Knight, who might be able to sneak their way onto the roster, who also offers that special team's ability. Uh, Jeff Smith also happens to be a gunner. And so while he's not at the level of a Justin Hardy, um, he is a guy that can still contribute uh, above average in that department for us. So the question is going to be, what do the Jets do? And, and honestly, if he does get cut, as sad as I'll be to see him go, this is most definitely a step in the right direction. Uh, we kept him last year because obviously we wanted to improve special teams, but we also just didn't have the same proven talent level um, and, and versatility that we now do in this second season. And so having to cut a guy that is supreme in one area like that, uh, but doesn't offer much impact anywhere else is, is definitely something I think a lot of us will sign up for. Maybe there's a way we can keep him. Uh, but I do think on the outside looking in, it's going to be a tough call. So Brant Boyer may have to do without his best special teams weapon. Uh, we'll see if it's an outright cut, but I, I don't necessarily see anybody else trading for him. So something to stay tuned for. Um, but those are going to be my two selections. So MC2 essentially as our untouchable. And keep in mind, the coaching staff absolutely loves him and his competition is very minimal. He has to face and beat out again uh, Javelin Guidry since most of our other secondary members are purely boundary cornerback. So let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Uh, should we find a way to absolutely keep Justin Hardy uh, or do we let him go and, and kind of what your thoughts are on Michael Carter, the second head into his second season. Catch you guys again. Peace.